The Chevrolet Bel Air is a full-sized car produced by Chevrolet for the 1950 through 1975 model years. Initially, only the two-door hardtops in the Chevrolet model range were designated with the Bel Air name from 1950 to 52. With the 1953 model year, the Bel Air name was changed from a designation for a unique body shape to a premium level trim applied across a number of body styles. The Bel Air continued with various other trim levels designations and it went from a mid-level trim car to a budget fleet sedan when the U.S. production ceased in 1975. Production continued in Canada for its home market only through the 1981 model year. The Chevrolet Bel Air, especially its third generation design, has been considered an icon of the 50s. Well-maintained and preserved examples are highly sought after by car collectors and enthusiasts. The first generation, 1950 through 1952, the Bel Air Sport Coupe was named, was used only for the two-door hardtops in the Chevrolet model range to distinguish the car from the style line and the fleet line models. It is named after the wealthy Bel Air neighborhood on the west side of LA. First year production reached only 76,662 models built. The car cost $1,741 and weighed 3,225 pounds. Front suspension was independent, named the knee action. The first Bel Airs of this era shared only their front sheet metal ahead of the A pillar with the rest of the range. The windshield doors, glass, and trunk were common with the Style Line Deluxe Convertible Coupe. However, the roof, the rear quarters, and rear windows were unique. The chassis and mechanicals were common with the rest of the passenger car range, and, uh, and the overall appearance was the same as the rest of the range, except that the roof line was lower, and the unique three-piece rear window gave it a longer and more balanced look. The first Bel Airs were available with only the deluxe premium trim level and specifications. Apart from the usual annual grill and trim changes, the 1951 through 52 Bel Air differed from the earlier 1950 model with the introduction of higher and square rear guards that were across the whole range. The 1953 Chevrolet renamed its series and the Bel Air name was applied to the premium model range. Two lower series, the 150 and 210, also emerged, successors to the Special and Deluxe series. The 1953 Chevrolet was advertised as entirely new through and through due to the wrestled the re, due to the restyled body panels, front and rear ends. However, essentially the Chevrolets had similar frames and mechanicals to the 1949 through 1952 cars. The Bel Air was given a facelift in 1953. The pre-war technology, such as torque tube drive, six cylinder splash fed engines, knee action suspension and split windshields of the earlier models was phased out and the foundations for the first post-war modern Chevrolet passenger car were finalized. The Bel Air series featured a wide chrome strip of molding from the rear fender bulge to the rear bumper. The inside of this stripe was painted according coordinating color with the outside body color. The Bel Air scripts were added inside the stripe. Lesser models had no model designation anywhere on the car, having only a Chevy crest on the hood and trunk. The 1953 was the first year for a curved one-piece windshield. The 
The Bel Air received new revamped styling for the 1955 model year. The Bel Air was 3,456 pounds and 15 feet long. The, the, it was called the hot one in GM's advertising campaign. Bel Airs came with features found on cars in lower model ranges, plus interior carpet, chrome headliner bands on the hardtops, chrome spears on the front fenders, stainless steel window moldings, full wheel covers, and a Ferrari-inspired front grille. Models were further distinguished by the Bel Air name script in gold lettering later in the year. For the 1955 Chevrolets gained a V8 engine option and the option of a two-speed power glide automatic or standard or a standard three-speed single mesh manual transmission with optional overdrive. The new 265 cubic inch 4.3 liter, liter V8 featured a modern overhead valve high compression ratio, short stroke design was so good that it remained in production in various displacements for many decades. The base V8 had a two barrel carburetor and was rated at 162 horsepower. And the power pack option featured a four barrel carburetor and other upgrades yielding 180 uh, BHP. Later in the year, a super power pack option added high compression and further 15 horsepower. Warning lights replaced gauges for the generator and oil pressure. This was not the first Chevrolet with a V8 engine. The first Chevrolet with a V8 engine was introduced in 1917 and called the Series D which was built for two years and was manufactured before Chevrolet joined General Motors. 1917, whoa. The 1955 Bel Air was a very well received Motor Trend magazine gave the Bel Air top marks for handling. Popular mechanics reported acceleration for the V8 Bel Air with power glide as a as being zero to 60 miles per hour in 12.9 seconds, plus a comfortable ride and good visibility. On the other hand, the horn ring blocked some of the speedometer and the regular gasoline made the engine knock and the first V8 engines off the line burned too much oil. Front leg room was 43.1 inches, brakes were 11 inches, where brakes were 11 inch drums, a new option for V8 equipped 1955 models was air conditioning with outlets on each side of the dashboard. A heavy duty generator was included on the cars equipped with this option. The 1955 and 56 air conditioning could be installed on cars ordered with the standard three speed manual transmission, overdrive or power glide. But from 1957 onward, an automatic transmission, or minus that four-speed manual transmission, was a prerequisite option. The 1956 Bel Air received a facelift with a more conventional full-width grille, pleasing those customers who didn't favor the Ferrari-inspired 55 front end. The 19, from 1955 to 1957, production of the two-door Nomad station wagon was assigned to the Bel Air series. Although its body and trim were unique to that model, prior to becoming a regular production model, the Nomad first appeared as a Corvette-based concept vehicle in 1954. Chevrolet has since unveiled two concept cars bearing the Nomad name, most, recent, most recently in 1999. The 55 through 57 Chevrolets are commonly referred to as the Tri-5s. The 1955 through 1957s were made in right-hand drive and shipped from Oshawa Car Assembly 
in Oshawa, Ontario for local assembly in Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. All three model years had reversed version of the 55 LHD dashboard and did not get the LHD model's 1957 redesign. A black 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air was featured in the 1973 movie American Graffiti. The 55 inch features a big hood scoop and a signature cowboy hat in the rear window. In the movie, it races against the yellow 1932 Ford Deuce Coupe and crashes into a ditch. The Bel Air had a 454 cubic inch Chevrolet motor with aluminum heads, tunnel ram intake, and dual Holly carburetors. Okay, well, if you found yourself this far into the video, we'd certainly like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch our video. And if you liked our video, please give us a thumbs up because it really does help our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe because we'll be doing all the cars from the 50s and 60s, muscle cars, hybrid cars, supercars, sports cars. We'll be doing auto shows, autoramas. Uh, we'll be featuring hot rods. So a little bit of everything for everybody. So thank you for taking the time out of your day. We look forward to seeing you when we upload our next video. Thank you and have a great day.